what's going on? This is Dave, the Solemn Servant, coming at you on Neftali's channel. Big shout out for letting me be on here, man. Um, today we're going to talk about idolatry among Christians. A lot of Christians don't even think they have idols. They think that's a thing of the past. But uh, in the Old Testament, you know, God gave us some commands that he wanted us to follow. He didn't want us to worship idols. He didn't want us to put anything before him or try to replace him with any other substance or person or idea, thought, anything like that. You remember in the Old Testament, Moses went up to the mountain to get the commands of God. And then um, the people, they got anxious. They thought he was gone, wasn't coming back. So they, they, they pressured the people and they got all the gold together, melted it down, molded a calf out of it, a golden calf, and they worshiped that. That was a big problem for God. Because uh, nobody else gets his glory, nobody else gets his place, and, and he'll let everybody know that, especially in the end. You know, it says every knee will bow to Jesus Christ, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And that's going to be people in heaven and in people in hell. So, uh, back to idols. Today, we probably don't go around making graven images. We probably don't go around and, uh, you know, create wood, metal you know, stone statues that we bow down and worship. But really, whatever gets your attention, that's what gets you. So whatever's first in your life, that's your idol. It's okay if God's your idol. He wants to be your idol. He's your source. He's the source of life. He's the reason right now that you're alive, that you're breathing, that you have a future, that you have a hope, that you even have heaven if you're a Christian. But anything short of that, you could make your church your idol. You could make your pastor your idol. You know, you could actually take knowledge from the Bible and separate that from the living God and make that an idol. All you are now, you're just about this teaching. You know, maybe it's baptism, everything's baptism. Maybe it's a Sabbath day, everything's about the Sabbath day for you. And you make that, or any doctrine, God instead of God himself. But it's kind of hard to detect that because you feel like, well, I'm preaching from the Bible. I'm talking about the Bible, so it must be approved by God. God alone is the idol that he wants you to run to, not anything else. We appreciate the Bible. We take its knowledge, but it's meant to be a stepping stone to get to God. And it in itself is not God. It's pen and ink, and it's his word. But we worship the creator. For others of us outside of that, you know, we kind of live loosely sometimes, you know. Some of us, you know, we take, uh, we don't do hardcore drugs. You know, we're not out there sleeping around. But what are we watching on TV, you know? What do we let come into our lives? What takes God's place is our source of satisfaction in our everyday lives. That's our idol. You got one. I got one. We all got them. And if you don't think you have one, just sit down with God and, and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what the idol is in your life. For me, sometimes I'm at work and I might roll up on a person, a couple people, and I might start cracking a couple jokes because it makes me feel good that they're laughing at my jokes. You see, that's my idol. Sometimes I'm my own idol, you know, and the people making an audience so that they can come back and, 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 and make me feel good, that's an idol. God alone is supposed to make me feel good, you know? So some of us, it's sports. Some of us, it's, you know, we got to get home after work and we have to watch that game. You know, sometimes you got to say, you know what, I want to watch that game, but I'm not going to watch it today. I'm going to go pray. Just so that you know in your heart, that's, that doesn't have control of me. I have control of it. That's not my master. I'm its master, you know. For some of us, you could take your family and make your family an idol, you know. If you put your family before God, it's not godly because you're not the source of your family and you pushing God aside and being all about the family, that's not good either. You know, we should always spend time with our families and guide them in a godly way, but you don't want to have it where you feel like if you don't make the next move, nothing's going to happen because that's not true. God alone causes growth to happen in your children's lives, in your wife, in your husband's life. God does those things. 
So for some of us, you know, it's uh, it's music, it's the iPod. We gotta have this in our ear 24-7. You see them, all these little white plugs in people's ears. I was watching the cops the other day standing on the corner. They're bored, they got the iPods in their ears. Everybody's got this in their ears now. They just can't think anymore. People have to have something pumping into their head. And it's good if you got something good pumping in your head, but at the same time, you got to be able to step back sometime and make sure you understand that you can live without this. There's only one thing in this world that you can't live without, and that's God. Everything else is secondary. God wants first place in your life, right? Here's how you tell if you have an idol in your life. Does this thing have you or do you have it? Is God on the throne? Or is this thing on the phone, right? Sometimes, here's the big one, it's YouTube. Yes, I said it, it's YouTube. YouTube is your idol. You're, way, you're on YouTube way too much. And that's not good, you know? You gotta back away. I'm on YouTube a lot, shopping my stuff around, trying to get people to come to my site so they can watch my videos, and, and it's for a Christian purpose. But even at that, only God gives results. So I can't make this whole thing about me and wanting to get noticed and all that, it's not about that. This is about God, you know? So I'm just encouraging all of us to get along with God, open your heart up, you know? Sit down and just say, God, help me see my idols. Help me see the places where I'm not putting you first. And even when I'm saying this to you, I'm getting convicted right now because I know I have areas where I need a lot of improvement. And uh, Naftali, Thanks again for letting me be on here. I hope this offers some type of hope and help to everybody listening. Y'all have a good day. Peace.